This race recap brought to you by Philips Connect, technology that moves us forward. They're off. Antron's car waters toward the center of the racetrack, and it's Austin Prock. 364 1 at 336 miles an hour. Back to back 364s. Antron Brown was 52, runs a 370. There is no better way for Ron Tolbert to check out of a Hall of Fame life in drag racing than this. Austin, you kicked off your season with a finals appearance here. You will finish your season with the win here. It was a season that tested you. You hit that dragster at one point. The adversity that you faced this season, how did it better your craft? You know, it was my sophomore season, and, uh, you know, they, they say that's typically a slouch, but we ain't no slouch. Uh, you know, we came out swinging when it counted, and, uh, you know, Honestly, I just wish we would have got a better start to the countdown. Uh, we probably could have won this deal. So this car's running great. I'm looking forward to next year already. But for Ron Tobler, the legend that he is, and he's going out on top and top fuel, uh, what a better storyline than that. So really proud. Joe Barlam, Montana brand, Frank Teagues is here. I finally won with Teagues in the house. That's back-to-back -back for John Force Racing, and uh, I can't wait for next year. Let's go. Ron caps the championship to be as long as he finishes this run without major incident. Cruz Pedragon running down the right side of the racetrack, and it's Pedragon 383.9, the quickest run of the year, the quickest run of his career. It is a 385.0 at 333. Ron Caps nearly scraping the wall. What a way to finish it off! A championship and an incredible run. And the last Wally of the season is going to go in the hands of Cruz Pedregon. And I have imagined that your competitors are going to be talking about you all off season long. You just ran your career best of 389.3, the best run of this season. How motivating is this to you? Well, it's beyond belief. This is probably my, uh, man, you know, really what, I, what we wanted to do here is uh, have a respectable end of the season because we just we, we just didn't get the job done, but uh, you know it's moments like this that we live for. It. Uh, I'm a wreck, but uh, stamp on. Thank you guys, um, Petrov, Russells, Kicker, Redline Oil, everybody that helps us. But really, I want to thank uh, the team. You know, we had a great team here, but I think Lee brought that veteran leadership that we needed. But I got to thank JC, John Collins, Rip, and Ryan for accepting him and allowing him to help us and. Uh, it's a hell of an off season. It's going to be sorry, guys. I get a little emotional, but uh, it's my home track. We grew up in Chino down the street. But uh, for all the young Mexican guys, you guys got to, somebody's got to replace me. So I got to get a little Hispanic dude that uh, has got a little money in his pocket and wants to drive one of these in a few years. But thank you, guys. Who will win the final round of the final race of the year? The two best of their generation, both in pre stage. <laughs> it's Greg. Greg's got 20 on her. At the finish line stripe, it is Greg Anderson on a whole shot. Poetry in motion for this season. A man who has been treated by some leg almost like a punching bag at times. He's lost on so many whole shots. It is career victory 101 for Greg Anderson. At the last race, Ken Black will be at the helm of KB Racing. What else should we put in the script? And it was a big hug with his on-track rival, Erica Enders. Thank you guys for the entertainment you gave us all year long. But this 101 trophy, I know you want to give it to someone special. Where is this one headed home to? Right to Ken Black. He's the man. He's the – what has he got, like 180 wins in this class? I got a measly 101. It's like nothing. He's the man. I thank him so much. I can't let him go. I can't let him get away. But you know what? He's got a sweet memory for his last – race as a team owner and uh, I, I couldn't have asked anything more that he's done for this team and his family thank you so much all the black family judy kenny jr everybody thank you to hendrick cars thank you to summit thank you to chevy thank you to denzo thank you to everybody it was a bad it wasn't a bad year but this is the way to end it both of us had written down joey gladstone as a pro stock motorcycle champion this year it's all about timing we we wrote that at a time where it appeared that joey was going to clean house Angie Smith's the one with the broom in her hand. She's 17 on the tray. Gladstone's 29. And at the finish line stripe, it's Angie Smith. 
on a hole shot. 674 9 at 199. She has won the NHRA Finals twice, once in 2020. Now in 2022, it is career win number four in career final number eight. What a finish. We tried to keep her whole shot victory a secret from her as long as we could, but her team showed up and let her know. And Angie, you were screaming all the way to this top end. How do you name the exhilaration of success? Man, it's just a relief. You know, I wanted so bad to win a race. We had done really well, but we just hadn't put the icing on the cake and we finally did it. And you know what? I owe everything to this entire team. You know, they have my back through the downs and the highs and everything. And this dance up like set on mean and uh, I hope this is a precursor for what it is, what it's going to be next year. And I love all of y'all. Erica, you did an amazing job. She's been my motivational speech for so long. And, you know, she's always in my ear telling me, you got this, you got this. Denso, Lucas Holt, Mark Stock, Seth Smith Trucking, everybody that helps us, Greg Butcher Trucking, we couldn't do it without all of y'all. Mama Lisa, this one's for you, baby. And this one is more importantly, this one's for my papa. He's watching from above. Welding, pumps, regulators, filters, fueling champions. Championship for the fifth time. He's racing in the final for the 46th time. And if he wants to win, he's got to beat Taylor Vetter, the young lady out of Las Vegas who is in the final for the first time. The only female driver in the country with a blown alcohol dragster. There are a lot of ladies driving the injected nitro cars. She likes doing it the hard way. Plan B Motorsport, our last national event, had a young lady that was a first time winner. You might have caught that one when Madison Payne beat Tony Stewart. Well, we've got a young lady on the left side trying to be a first time winner by beating a five time world champ. Taylor gets way over by the wall and she gets up on her side. She got the chutes out, straightened the car out, and it is sliding on its side. Taylor Vetter goes for a wild ride. Her wind light is on, but we're gonna have to go back and take another look at that. Joey Severance, 548, 206, shut her down. Taylor, the car moved toward the wall, moved back. You saw her pull the chute out, and you could see the car laid on its side. It did not tumble. It was up on its side, sliding on the two right side tires, got up against the wall, and then came to a stop. We're gonna have to take another look and see just exactly where she crossed the center line, but I do believe she won the race. Ladies and gentlemen, she's out of the car, talking to the safety safari up at the top end of the racetrack. You would be hard pressed to find somebody that is in better physical shape than Taylor Vetter. She is a fitness freak. Taylor Vetter just won her first national event. In crazy fashion. Last run of the alcohol funny car season. Doug Gordon will be the champion. But can Sean Bellamere steal the Auto Club Finals? Five forty four beats five forty five in a terrific drag race and Sean Bellamere gets the finals. Doug Gordon won the war. Sean Bellamere won the last battle and get there first. They both got the green part. Finish line. 719 for the win for Alan Wilson. Making it happen. He picks up his second win. First one in 27 years. 642 for Ryan. In high style. Or wild fashion. We're going to go to Tim Seymour. 427. Copo Chevrolet. And Jimmy Hidalgo. Trying to take two trophies back to Louisiana. One big, one bigger.
at the finish line. Cooter wins again, 971, 131 the speed. Tim Seymour predicted he was gonna run 907, he ran 906. Chris Hall in the left lane took two cars into Sunday. Got beat in the last round in a super stocker. Ryan Mangus in the right lane. We've got a 327, 68 Nova. That's the Foggett machine. And we've got an SS 396, second generation Camaro. That's the Pauls and Z Green machine. Ryan Pretty, your comp champ, headed back to start the celebration. Mangus away on the green. Red light start for Chris Hall. He jumps too soon by five thousandths of a second. And for Ryan Mangus, who had had opportunities before and never been able to close the deal, he just won his first national event. Team McLeod car in the left lane. And Jerron Settles, the flying airbrush, all the way in from Maryland, driving one of the Ted Weens cars in the right lane. Now, Jerron Settles coming in on a little bit of a hot streak. He won the big regional event last year out in Vegas, but he's never won a national before. Angelina's never been in a final before. Eight point nine zero is the standard. Who's going home with our first national event, Wally? It's going to be the airbrush. Eight ninety four beats eight ninety four. Both drivers back of the dial a little bit, and Jerron Settles, who won his first regional last week. If Bob Locke, right lane, wins this round, he wins the Lucas Oil Championship. If Brian Pressler, left lane, wins this round, Phil Unruh is the world champion. And neither driver has ever won a national event. We're gonna make a whole lot of history here one way or the other. For the blue car, win and you're the champ. For Pressler, win and you'll have your first national event trophy to go with a world championship that he was able to win without a national event victory a couple of years back. They're ready. They're green. A championship in the balance. Depending on which scoreboard comes up, your world champion is Bob Locke. He runs dead on four. Last run, 990 is the standard. He runs 9.904. He came here having to win the race to win the championship. Handicap head start is dialed in. Kenny says 6.11 seconds. Dylan says 6.68. Dylan Howell will take off. And Al Kenny will try to catch him. Both drivers get away on a green light. Who did the better job predicting? Give the win light to Kenny. 613, 211 miles an hour. Dylan goes 671 at 197. The newly crowned champ against the guy who came up that much short. Final Fortex Supercharger top sportsman race of the year. Vince gets up on the center line. He's got to get out of the throttle and check it out. 691, 188 miles an hour. Lance Abbott, he won the battle and he won the war. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for the latest in drag racing content and some awesome old school races. Make sure you check out the Competition Plus Power Hour with the Monday morning racer Lee Craft and Slammin' Sammy Smith every Tuesday at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on our YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter channels. It's easy to stay in the know. Download the CompetitionPlus.com mobile app. Sign up for push notifications to get notified of breaking news and the latest feature stories and videos. It's a free download at the iTunes Store and Google Play.